Hey guys, it's Unfor Games, and you've all expressed emotions ranging from mild concern to absolute terror that my April Fool's joke was a reality, and Final Fantasy XI videos were gone to the winds. Not true! <laughs> Nay, I say Final Fantasy XI shall be with us as long as I have memories to share and a video game to, to film that's live. Don't shut down. Don't shut down Final Fantasy XI. But with all the business of the giveaway and 3,000 subs and, and April Fool's Day, it's been a couple weeks since we've had a legitimate good old Final Fantasy XI visit, so let's jump right into two of my favorite artifact sets with Blue Mage and Beastmaster. Now as weird as it sounds, thematically these two jobs share a lot of similarities, and both explore aspects of the game that 99% of the player base either didn't know existed or didn't care about. Hell, I play both and I still forget all of this stuff because frankly, Who's got the time? But in terms of gameplay and focus of each job, these two couldn't be more different. So let's kick it off with Beastmaster and see exactly how different they are. Beast, Beast, Beast. Beast has been a long time coming, and without a doubt is one of the most unique jobs in Final Fantasy XI. That should come as no surprise to anyone who's familiar with the game, because unlike every single other job in this massive MMO, it was primarily played solo. Or with other beasts if you could find them, but almost never in a party. Beast was one of the few jobs capable of chaining toughs and occasionally a very tough all on its own, and getting 3 or 4k an hour with it was, was pretty consistent, without the help of anyone else. While this was slower than a standard party, being able to do it by yourself without forming a party or waiting for an invite meant that you could usually keep up with everybody else or maybe even go faster. But there was no denying that it, it was kind of lonely, which was... Sort of the point, Beast always felt like you'd wander off into the wilderness and, and come back a few levels stronger a few days later and everyone's like, oh, what's up, dude? Like, I was worried about you, thought you were dead, like, glad you're alive, or some nonsense. I don't know, it was just, it was one of those jobs you just kind of would disappear by yourself for a while. It was cool. But it's hard to fully express how weird this was in a game where making literally any progress without a party was considered insane. Beast soloing from 1 to 75 entirely was just, it was weird, it was, it was weird. It was dangerous too, with charms uncharming themselves at the absolute worst times, uh, failed charms getting you killed before the fights even began, and no support around you in case anything at all went wrong. If something went wrong, it was just you. But I mean, there were a bunch of benefits, including that no one, and I mean no one, cared how well you were geared. Not to say it wasn't nice to be geared up for the rare chance you did get a party, which was like, Never. There was a stigma. There was a stigma. And for a while, there was a, you couldn't have pets in the party because it actually decreased the experience that the group would get. That's, that's insane. But even after they, they changed that, there was just still kind of a stigma and people didn't really want beasts in the party. Because of that, you could gear in whatever you wanted. You were your own worst enemy in terms of leveling speed. However much you wanted to put into it, that's up to you. You want a monster signal, the nicest axes for the level range? Great. You want level 1 axes and no plus charisma gear at all? Fine. And because Beast was soloing mostly toughs anyway, the best accuracy in his hack gear wasn't really crucial. I mean, you could probably hit that stuff no matter what. I'm leading up to the fact that the artifact could have been the absolute worst shit in Vanadeel and you still could have worn it. So was it? Was it that bad? Well, actually, not really. And for once, I'm not really going to go into too much detail about the difficulty of acquiring that gear. Because while Beast did get kind of screwed with Castle Astrosia chest and, you know, Garlage and Bedo coffers, but did luck out in the Crawler's Nest department, it's Beast. Beast is the soloing king. Did tons of sneaky ways to try and get us some coffer keys. I mean, two hours some slimes, fight some bombs, and I mean, if it was still just too hard, they could just wait and solo it in a few levels. You could live without the artifact, because you're still just soloing. I'm sorry, Beast, but you're not going to get any sympathy here. So every piece of gear in this awesome looking set, and I do mean awesome, seriously, picture everything you loved about the Skyrim promo armor times like a hundred. It all has plus charm. I'll get into how much on each in a sec, but this was just awesome because of how plus charm worked. Plus charisma enhanced the chance of success that your charm would succeed and the base charm duration with some crazy math. But plus charm further enhanced that duration even more, significantly increasing it. Look, there was math involved, people knew about the math, and I don't remember it. It was, it was like doing weird, complicated calculus algebra stuff in Final Fantasy XI for these people that determined how your stats worked on a base core level. But regardless, the plus charm was really solid for making sure your pets would last throughout the battle and wouldn't uncharm like right as you thought you were about to win. But that's not the only benefit of the first piece, the boots, which offered plus two to charm. They also enhanced reward, the treat giving ability that was one of the few ways you could heal your pet. Given that nice reward treats tended to be pretty expensive, any way to improve the efficiency of these things was a godsend. Not that beasts were ever really starved for cash. The gloves come with some more plus charm and plus dex and parrying skill, both solid for soloing and possibly worth the full time in your set just to avoid the hassle of swapping them out for something else. Although there were better options for pure offense. But how about that amazing helmet at 56? 
so furry, and the horns. This is one of the coolest pieces here in the game for me. I, I love this thing. I wanted it so bad. It looks so cool on Tartars. And with Enhance's Tame and even higher plus charm, I mean, that was totally worth keeping around. Tame made aggroing enemies rethink all of their life choices and just kind of like, go away. And reduce the resistance to the next charm attempt if you wanted to do it. Definitely one of the most useful abilities in the Beastmaster repertoire, and I just loved this helmet. The fun just keeps coming with the body though, which is also just so furry <laughs> and, and awesome. Plus five charm on this sucker was an augment to reward. The augment was probably more important than the enhancement to be honest, because it changed reward to remove like poisons and other effects as well. With how enemy poisons and status debuffs like worked, and how they worked on your pets. I mean, this can mean the difference between saying goodbye to a pet or keeping it going for like a few fights in a row, which was really important for keeping that speed going, keeping the chain up. Plus, you could swap it out after the charms and rewards for something better, but it was just so cool looking. Why would you bother to do that? The pants, though, well, they're kind of a mixed bag. I mean, you look at it, plus four charisma and plus six charm is like the best of any piece we've seen yet for pure charmage. So yeah, why am I saying that? I mean, well, for one, they're just visually lame. Compared to the awesomeness and the furriness of all the other pieces, they're just they're just kind of black pants. But then there's the enhanced killer effect, you say. And honestly, this is pretty handy. It's just the system was so annoying. <laughs> killer effect would cause an enemy of an appropriate affinity to be intimidated occasionally against enemies of the you know, opposite affinity. Or beastmasters that have the trait that causes, you know, that affinity clash. Was it cool? Yes! Did I remember it? Hell no. Oh, I mean, this was like a cool other rock, paper, scissors, weaknesses versus strength things that I just, I always forgot. I mean, they were super important. It was really handy. So like, long time life Beastmasters probably knew this by heart, but I just always forgot. It's nice as the AF is, you know, solid and still improving upon it. I just hate that it was a constant reminder that there was a deeper complexity of enemy strengths and weaknesses that I could never remember. It made me feel inadequate. I'm sorry, Square Enix. I, I always appreciate the, the layers of depth that this game had, but I could, I could just never remember this shit. Which is doubly bad because it mattered for the next job as well. Blue Mage. Uh, not the killer effects per se, but the strengths and weaknesses of various mobs and their types over others. Blue was all about that with the spells maintaining the strengths of their monster parent families and, and weaknesses as well. Look, this is so neat. I, I don't know why I could never remember. And on blue it was even harder because sometimes you just couldn't for the life of you remember where a spell came from. And as I switched around from job to job, I just, I forgot. Damn you enemy affinities. But enough bitching about my own inadequacies with Blue Mage and Beastmaster, and let's get on to the Blue Mage artifact. Well, the blue artifact, much like many sets, ranges from, you know, okay to downright sweet lemon pants. But it's also the first in the series to follow the newish rules of artifact armor of just kind of buying it. So with Treasures of Honor gone, in Square Enix's ultimate wisdom, they made a change to decrease the amount of competition for coffer keys and other apparently antiquated ways of gathering artifact. Instead, besides the first and last pieces, which would still be achieved by fun new difficult quest lines, You'd have an in-game NPC kind of craft you the three middle pieces with like actual items. Sounds great, right? <laughs> Who needs coffer keys when I can just pay for the gear? Problem was, at the height of blue popularity when it was first released, I mean, shit, those items got expensive. They became harder to find. I remember some pieces being upwards of a couple hundred K when it, when it all added up. And when it used to be an afternoon of struggling for a coffer key and then hunting down the chest, which seemed like so rewarding, paying for it was kind of rough. On top of that, you then had to wait a full day for this asshole to craft your shit. I'm not sure what he was doing, but it took him forever. Luckily, the blue quest line pretty much made up for it, going into this incredible life or death struggle for one's soul against the raging power of the enemies you fought flowing inside you. It was just, damn, it was a cool premise. You couldn't escape it. You just had to rise to meet it or wait the inevitable death as you succumbed to the power and strength of your foes. It was Badass! Also, you fought Flans. I freaking hated Flans. They were just... Blah, 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 blah. The final quest got even more intense, but we'll get to that in a bit. So how's the gear itself? I mean, the boots start off solidly in that they're eh, okay, I guess, range, with some plus HP, MP, and minus enemy. If it wasn't for the fact that these were boots, they, they probably wouldn't see the light of day, but for most of the game, there just aren't any good boots. I'm saying I wore them. Sue me. The pants didn't do much for you either, but they looked... So sweet. I love those poofy blue pants. I mean, so sure, whatever. Vitality and agility are probably modifiers for some spell at some point. What else? I'm wearing them. They cost me like 200k. They're cool looking. I'm wearing them forever. But if you remember one piece of the blue mage artifact, it's probably the next one. The gloves. These gloves were absolutely 
worthless. Unless you were learning blue magic, in which case they were absolutely required. Learning blue magic was singularly the most amazing thing ever, and the absolute worst part of Final Fantasy XI all just rolled into this weird ball of confusion. When you first learn pollen from a bee at like level 2, and then headbutt from a tiny mandragora, and then cocoon, and sickle slash, and foot kick, you're just like, oh my god, this is fucking incredible. It just felt so cool, and the MP cost was, was way lower than standard mage jobs, and you got all these awesome effects, and it was all stuff that you'd like hated forever. Huge defense boost from that made Paladins briefly try subbing blue for like two days when it came out. Slow effects from Sprout Smack. I mean, it was all the best parts of Red Mage and Dark Knight rolled into one. You could buff yourself and feeble the enemy with, with their own shit, mind you, while dealing out some awesome damage and skill. Self skill chains! Self skill chains were so cool! One second you're healing yourself with Opo Opo's damn magic fruit, and then the next second you're smacking a bugle with his own damn screwdriver. Awesome! Unfortunately, around level 40 or so, this went from an amazing gotta catch em all Pokemon minigame that made you feel like you were truly earning your spells as you leveled, to this ungodly and unfair random chance bullshit with all the cards in the dealer's favor. Every blue mage has spent hours punching an enemy with his fist trying to get it to use a specific ability only to not learn it. I've died from mobs that are just a little too hard actually using the right move just to kick my ass with it. I've gotten groups together to fight enemies totally out of my league to learn spells I, I could have used 10 levels before and I've had the group give up after like an hour of not learning it. It was just the worst. And I honestly don't think it had to be quite as difficult as it was. But maybe I'm just bitching. But honestly guys, I, Square Enix, Final Fantasy XI is really hard in a lot of ways. But the hard blue magic, and even just the okay blue magic, come on, give us a break. Anyways, it was still really cool, but it'll just never mask that initial wonder and just general fun of hunting down spells in the lower levels. But I say all this to say that when these gloves said increases chance to learn blue magic, you can bet your ass they were on my taratar nonstop in any situation that wasn't a party. Enough of that. Anyways, the body, the body is just awesome. Uh, plus three dex, plus three strength, and plus 15 blue magic skill. This was useful for basically anything you'd cast and anything you were trying to learn. Swapping out for TP building for sure, but you better have this thing on when you're casting anything. And it just looks cool. My favorite times ever were the Vermilion Cloaks days. Having that auto refresh as Blue Mage and two little swords was like a cool mage's robe. But at the same time, it was like one of the core reasons I loved Blue Mage. But ugh, swapping out of the spell gear every time you cast something and going back to your TP set, it was just like a huge pain. Leaving us with only the headpiece, which was similarly badass looking. And oh my god, ugh, improves correlation effects. And who can remember those? I, I just, I don't get it. I never remember them. But man, did you have to earn that piece, because as it closed out the amazing story of Blue Mage Origins, it gave you one of the tougher artifact fights that I can remember in this game. You know Soul Flayers? They've been in Final Fantasy games as far back as I can remember as one of the tougher enemies in those games. Well, you fight one for the level 60 Blue Mage artifact. And it's got some cool lore surrounding it too. It, it, apparently, you know, they come from Blue Mages that couldn't control their power and were consumed by it. And it's up to you to end this thing's miserable life, which is, of course, stupid hard. This was a tough fight, but at least you looked super badass for completing it. I mean, that thing was pretty cool. And it perfectly fit the Ottergon atmosphere while everybody was around there forever. Anyways, guys, that's it for my trip down memory lane with Blue Mage and Beastmaster. Let me know what you thought of these artifact sets, and as always, comment with anything I missed or didn't know about or just frankly screwed up. Let me know what jobs you guys are hoping to see next. I know Blue was on that list for like a lot of people, so hopefully thou art pleased. Uh, anyway, seriously, peace out everybody, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Thanks. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week, and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you'll like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya!